I want to turn this down. Hi everyone, I'm not sure if you're getting to join us um, or if you've been hanging out and waiting around. This is our first YouTube event and we have been trying to get this up for you guys and trying to help you guys to see this and we've been having some struggles. So I apologize that this is happening rather late. We will hang on longer if you have questions or if you have comments that you wanna make um, while we're working out these kinks. And then next time we come to you, we'll have some better camera angles as well as some more, um, some more questions for you guys to answer. So I'm gonna start out with this event kind of describing what is what are the best things that I have for bead weaving? So bead weaving wise, I'm gonna give you basically what I have and what I travel with. You never know when you can bead, you never know when you're gonna get stuck in the car for five hours sitting in traffic. So I like to always have a little beading kit that I keep in my trunk that I'm working with. So this time I'm gonna go over some of those things, what I keep and what the different bead materials that I have and my favorite things to use. And then from there we'll go on. You see the Twitter down here and the hashtags. You can tweet us. You can also message us right here on the live chat as well as you can get a chance to go to our Facebook page and we can answer questions that way as well. So in addition to telling you guys what I have in my beading kit, I am also going to um, show you some different little projects that I have, some simple solutions to a lot of the questions that people have when we're asking them. So to start out with, I'm going to show you guys what I keep in my bead kit. So it's kind of that what's in your purse and you know, it's that fun stuff that you want to know what people have and what people use the most often. So to start out, even though I'm doing bead weaving and I'm not having wire, I always have a little bit of wire on hand. Usually I keep 20 and 24 gauge wire. I like to keep art wire because it's really, really flexible and you never know when you might need a piece of wire even though we're getting into bead weaving. Bead weaving is much easier to travel with than wire working because you don't need as much. You need some thread, you need some small beads, and it's easy to take. I've taken it on planes a lot. I always get that weird look through the security, make sure that I have my tiny little pliers. I have even had my tiny little pliers confiscated, but um, that was in a foreign country, so I think they weren't, they weren't sure what they were. But usually you can travel with a lot of bead weaving things that you can't do when you're traveling with wire working. But what I have in my kit are my pliers. And when I'm working with pliers, I have my wire cutters. These are actually Sparkle tool set wire cutters from Beadalon. I like these the best. Um, they have a really nice cut to them and they've held up really well through all of my different projects. In addition to my wire cutters, I always keep on hand my needle nose pliers. Needle nose pliers are kind of essential for bead weaving. They make it really, really easy for you to squash down and to thread your needle. So I'll show you that little hint when we get further along. In addition to that, I have my round nose pliers. Again, we're not doing a lot of wire working, but you never know, so I try to keep the pliers on hand. The other little tool that I always keep is a bead reamer. So this reamer here has a point on it and what it's great for is getting um, any knots that you may have when you're bead weaving and when you're going back into your project and you may see a little knot or a little thread that's sticking up, the reamer is great to have on hand. You can also use your needle a lot of times for this, but sometimes if you get in tight spaces, it might bend your needle and you don't wanna break your needle that you're working with. So a reamer comes in handy. In addition to that, I have a nice sharp pair of scissors. Um, these scissors that I have are the slip and snip. They actually go inside of themselves. Um, we're gonna be starting to carry these scissors. Um, they're great because I've gotten through every airport with these, both international and national flights. And I would don't know what I'd do if I lost them. So these are really, really sharp, great scissors that I use for cutting my thread because you wanna get a nice cut. That's gonna make it easier for you to put on your needle when you're threading your needle. In addition to those tools, I have 
the one beading tool I can't live without, which is my Thread Zap. And this is the Thread Zap 2 by Beadalon. Um, you press the little button here and the coils heat up. If you've never used one before, they're worth the you know, $15 um, expense. They're a great little tool for getting the ends of your thread really, really close and burning down. You can also burn your fingers pretty easily, which um, you don't realize and it doesn't seem like it gets that hot in that much of a space. But I've burnt myself several times on this and it doesn't always make you feel like the brightest uh, crayon in the box either. So be careful with your thread zap. In addition to my thread zap, I always keep super glue handy. And the super glue that I prefer is super new glue. So Super New Glue is a fast drying super glue and it is a glue that you don't have to wait around for because it is fast drying. When I'm done my project, I always glue my knots and that's a little hint, don't glue until you're completely done with your project. Otherwise you can risk gluing your holes of your bead shut and then you can't finish your product or if you decide you want to embellish it later, especially if you're doing a basic b stitch for a base. Don't glue until you're 100% certain that you're done your project. I actually keep this little super new glue in my purse too, because you never know when you might need super glue. In addition to that, I have my needles. I have my needles in old tubes of seed beads, and that's the best thing that I have found to keep them in. Um, this is size 10 English Lance beading needle, and I keep 10s and 12s on hand. Um, there are 15 size needles too, but I've never felt the need to use them. 10s are gonna be a little bit thicker and a little bit longer. 12s are gonna be a little bit thinner and they're gonna bend a little bit more. They're great for working with 15 O seed beads or if you have a lot of passes back through a seed bead. So these are my needles. I keep them again in two different containers marked with the size that they are and that way you don't have to fish around if you need a 10 or a 12. You can just grab the one that has the label to it and you don't need to worry about it. In addition to that, I keep thread in every color on hand that Wildfire makes. I'm not a big fan of Nymo, even though they have a great color selection. It stretches and it frays. There's also um, Fireline beading thread. I find that the black comes off a ton on my fingers and that drives me crazy. I like Wildfire beading thread. It's um, a little bit more flexible, I find, also than the Wildfire uh, or than the Fireline. So Wildfire comes in three colors. It comes in this nice shade of green, and it comes in a frost color, and it comes in a black color. I keep all of these on hand for my beading projects, and you wanna make sure that whichever color you're choosing, that it works well with your project. Um, if I have any clear beads or any beads that I can see, through whatsoever, I immediately eliminate black. So black's out of the question. Um, white thread, if I have a lot of dark beads, I'm usually gonna go towards the black thread. For almost everything else, I grab the green thread. I actually use this green thread probably more than any other thread, which um, when our Beadalon rep first said, we're producing green now, I said she was crazy and I held out for a number of years before getting this green tried a sample that she finally sent me and fell in love with the green color. It matches blues, it matches purples, it matches green, so it matches a lot of different colors. Um, in addition to the different colors, I keep usually my uh, .006 beading thread. Um, there's also .008. I like to keep, if I can only keep one on hand, I keep the thinner. I'd rather be able to work with a thinner thread than not have as much. There are a 10 pound test and a 20 pound test the 10 pound test usually is the one that I go to first. So that's my beading thread of choice that I use. In addition to that, in my beading kit and in my little beading bag that I keep in my car and kind of travel everywhere with me, I have my bead mat. And the bead mat is great because it's gonna stop your beads from rolling. So the bead mat is a nice kind of fluffy surface. Whenever I teach kids classes or um, do different events at schools, I just did one last week, they always lay their heads down on the bead mats right away and I always yell at them to pay attention. But the bead mats are great because when you have small beads and tiny beads, it really keeps the beads from rolling around. It's also easy when you're working with your needle to stick your needle into the bead mat and that way you won't poke yourself. And it's also easy to pick the beads up off the bead mat rather than a flat surface. 
You can use a towel, you can use something else, but the bead mat is really ideal. They're only a dollar something and they can be washed too. Usually when my bead mat gets to the point that it has tons of super glue on it um, from just kind of dabbing the glue here and there if I pour a little too much out, that's when I toss it, invest in another dollar fifty bead mat and kind of go from there. Another little helpful hint is that you can actually take your bead mat and cut it in half. So sometimes I cut my bead mat down this down the middle completely and then I have two different working surfaces. When I'm done my project or if I'm completely ready to move and travel and I've got all, I'm moving out of that five hours of traffic, usually what I do is actually just roll my bead mat up. It keeps my project in place and then I don't have to worry about losing everything. So it's a great little way to keep it. And um, my 31 rep would love that I'm saying this, but I actually use a 31 bag and it's a toiletry bag to keep everything in. We sell lots of different beading kit bags. I have found that the ones that have the little plastic edges in them are really great because they can be washable and they can wipe down. And that's what I put my bead mat in. And when I roll it up, it fits perfectly in one of those little toiletry compartments. So basically we're going to get going here. I'm going to take a tiny little break. Um, just so I can get set up for answering some of your questions and to get to some of them. And in about 45 seconds, we'll get back moving again to answer any questions that you may have. And I'm gonna start, for those of you that are curious and wanna know what I'm doing, if you have a project, again, that is a peyote or a square stitch or a loom project, I'm gonna be putting a clasp on the end of that bracelet to start out with to show you exactly what I do for clasps and how I add them as well. So, be ready, we're gonna get started in about a minute. questions. How long is the delay? Yeah, maybe 30 seconds. Okay. The max. I think it's even less than that. Okay. So that's okay. Okay folks, so I am set up and ready to go and this is going to be my first little project that I work on. Again, since we did get started late and since some of you didn't join us till later, since we were working out some of those kinks and if you guys have suggestions for next time, what you want to see, let me know and we can kind of work on that. I'm going to be answering some of the simple questions that people come into the store and have and show you just how to kind of answer some of those and how to solve some of those issues. So to start out, I am using, again, my loom project. And when I have my loom project here, I'm going to be putting my end on. The nice thing, again, this is a loom project coming from the Rick's beading loom. Normal beading loom projects, you're gonna see tons and tons of little threads coming out. Um, the nice thing with the Rick's is on one end, I have one thread, and on the other end, I have three threads. So I'm not gonna have tons and tons of threads coming out. I just have those nice little threads that are hanging out there. So I've threaded my needle onto my end that just has the one thread. And I'm gonna show you the simple way that I go on to adding my button clasp here. So I just have a little button that I'm gonna be adding. I have my thread and needle, and I'm using size 11 O seed beads. This thread that it is threaded on is the um, Wildfire .006 in white. I'm adding enough beads that it's gonna go the whole way along my project and that my button is gonna easily fit in there. I'm actually gonna take some of my beads off. You're gonna to have to measure your project based on your clasp. 
And I'm going to take some of these beads off. I got a little bead happy there and added too many. Once I have these on, I'm going to take my thread and needle and I'm going to go the whole way back down my little line here. And this loom project is made with three millimeter check glass. So I've got this whole little line here that I'm taking my thread and bead through. And I'm going to then take this up through. So I'm gonna keep going with this here and then we have a couple questions that I'm gonna answer. And just show you, anytime you have a clasp or a project that you definitely want to do the end on and you're working with thread, you wanna make sure that you always go through the clasp multiple times. So I'm going through twice here. I'm gonna go the whole way back down through and the whole way back through my project. I don't like to leave the end of my project usually with one loop. I like to do at least peyote. That's gonna decorate the loop a little bit. And to do peyote, you're gonna grab one bead, skip the first bead, and go to the second bead. And a simple question that I can answer right now for Kelly is that I machine wash the bead mat while I'm working on it. And if you're not sure how to do peyote, it's a little bit hard with this camera to show you guys. It's much easier to check out our YouTube video. But basically peyote, you're gonna add a bead, skip a bead, add a bead, skip a bead, and you're going the whole way along the line. And that's gonna show you how to kind of add your peyote here. But what this does is it decorates the end of your loop here nicely. So that way you don't have to worry about seeing um, a lot of your thread. It also is going to get you guys um, the thread here covered up. Then when I put my button on, I'm gonna put that on. The other question that people have as they go around, and so I won't waste your time here, I'm not going to show you exactly how to do it, um, but you continue on with your peyote. Once you're done your peyote, I'm gonna bring the camera back down to show you how I tie off the thread. So I'm gonna just run my cording the whole way down the rest, but I normally would kind of create that peyote line. Again, I'm gonna run my cording the whole way down and then I'm gonna show you how to tie off my thread here. So, if this were my last line here, I'm gonna run my needle and thread the whole way through. And if I wasn't doing peyote, I would still try to get those three or four through. And I'm gonna run this the whole way down through those seed beads again. And again, this is 11 O's with a size 10 needle and the thinner thread. Once I get down on my project, whether or not it's square stitch or peyote, I like to stretch and go through the project. So I have my project here. I'm going to pick up one of my, in this case, it's a warp thread. In other beading, um, you may call it a bridge thread. And that's gonna be picked up and it's gonna go right here. My needle is gonna go between. I'm gonna then take my needle through that loop that I've created and that's gonna create a little half hitch knot. That's gonna hold that in there nicely. I'm gonna continue on my project, and I do those half hitch knots, and so back through my project till I can't really do it anymore until this thread is driving me crazy. So I stitch back through, do another half hitch knot, and do this the whole way along. Then the other question that people have is, okay, so you're doing all of these knots and you're doing all of this here, where do you glue? I usually glue at the first knot and the last knot. I don't worry about gluing at every single knot here or that's gonna get a lot of glue at the end of your project. So I have my line here that I'm gonna take it back down. Square stitch or doing it on a loom is nice because you have these nice long lines that you can sew through. And I always try to tie off my knots in the middle of my projects so you don't see the knots on the sides of your projects here. Once I have all of those little half hitch knots and I've sewn back through my project, I'm then gonna cut off my thread 
as close as I can. This is where those scissors come in handy, or what I do most of the time is grab my thread burner. Again, I press down a little bit on the button here. That's gonna heat it up, and then I'm gonna burn right through. And you can tell with this, I can tell right now, of course we're on live here, my battery is dying. When you get new batteries, it whips through there really, really quickly. The other thing you can do is if you have a little bit of piece of thread that's sticking up, you can take your burner basically and just burn right down onto it. So you press it in, you hold it in, and you put it right down to your project and that's gonna burn. Then what I would do is glue that last knot that I did and then back up here at that first knot. You flip over to the other side of your project then, and with the bead thread here, um, because I have the warp threads, I'm just gonna tie those two together. So this is one of my warp threads and my starting thread. I tie those together into a little knot. You can burn or cut these ends off. And I'm not gonna cut them off really, really small. I'm just gonna cut them off enough that I can see where they are so I can go back and glue the project later. I thread my needle onto here. And then basically like creating the loop on the other end, I'm gonna sew through my seed bead here. And thread my needle, sew through, add my button. And then once I'm done, it's just going to do my little closure clasp. And you can have it there. Another question that somebody had unrelated to doing this was how to store, and I was talking about traveling earlier, what do you do with your delicate projects that you're working on? So if you have um, either delicate projects that you're not completely done with, um, or delicate projects or completed pieces of jewelry that you're traveling with. Um, when I travel, I try to take um, a bead mat and I actually roll the bead mat. So if this were my project here, Again, I'm gonna roll up my bead mat or even my piece of jewelry. The bead mat works really well. Another thing, if you have something that you don't wanna get tangled, you can actually put them into a um, toilet paper roll and you can roll it up like this and then you can put it into a toilet paper or a paper towel roll so you know they won't get kind of caught at the ends there. But you can basically put a project in each little section here, if this were another one, and you can continue to roll. Um, the other thing, and that's a great idea for chains too, so that way they don't get tangled in. Another thing that you can do um, when you're traveling, if you're traveling with jewelry, is they do sell little compartments. Um, another good idea is actually to get multiple bead mats. So when I'm traveling, I usually will have um, four or five bead mats, and that's why cutting it in half is nice too. I fold it up, or you can sit one on top of the other. Generally at my beading space at my house, you'll see about 12 bead mats piled on top of one another. And I just keep piling them on top and on top. And each layer has a different project. And then at some point in my life when I have tons and tons of time, I'm gonna go back and take off those mats one by one and actually get to them. Um, this loom project, just to know that you're not alone, this loom project was done about 10 months ago and it's just getting its clasp on now. I find putting the clasp onto most of my projects as the most annoying thing. It takes the longest. I'll get in a groove where I'm really working and I have, you know, I'm doing my right angle weave and it's going great and I'm getting my end of my bracelet ready to go and I'm done my tennis bracelet or I'm done my spiral rope bracelet and then I have to put on the clasp. So it might sit for two weeks before I put on the clasp. So that's my downfall is putting the clasps on my jewelry. Any of the girls here at the store, any of our stores, um, I usually have big bags of projects that are sitting here that they write my name on and it says Allie's Projects. And when I come in I say, oh, I don't even remember starting that. I swear they throw some things that aren't mine in there and that way they try to get me to finish them off. But we actually have um, finish days and I do the same thing at home. It's a good idea if you can't get yourself and bring yourself to finish things and you say, oh, I have so many projects and so many projects finished. Set aside one night or you know a weekend where you say, I'm not starting anything new. I'm so tempted by these new beads that I got or this new color of tila or this new shape of seed bead that I got or this button clasp that I really wanna use. Set those aside and try to discipline yourself to putting the ends on because again, that is the hardest part a lot of times with the bead weaving. The nice thing is if you start any project with two needles, 
put your clasp on first. Um, when you have two needles, you easily have a starting point, like this button here. Right there, it's, you can put the two needles through right away. And whenever you start with two needles, I always suggest put the clasp on right away. It's on, it's done. And a lot of times with two needle projects, you're going up one side, coming back the other. You get a chance then to reinforce it. So two needles, always put your clasp on right away. Otherwise, you'll regret it and you'll have to come back and do it. With one needle, sit down, put your side time aside and do a whole finishing day like we do here at the bead store. Nobody likes the finishing days because everybody wants to use the new stuff, but if you actually finish your products, you can get them for sale, you can give them as gifts, or you can wear them rather than having them rolled up in your bead mat and sitting for days or weeks on end. The number one thing that I hate is if I wait too long to finish a product, I will have my loom beads here and I will forget that I was saving certain beads for this and I will use them for another project. I go back to finish this and make a loop out of my check glass beads and I'll find that I've used them in another project. So that's one thing that you wanna make sure the faster you can actually finish the project is basically how they, how they um, get done. It's gonna have faster. So another, another question um, in addition to um, kind of storing those projects when you are working them and rolling them up in the bead mat is to actually get a container and you may want to cut your bead mat in half or into the shape of the container. There's a lot of times that you get those little tins that um, are for Christmas cookies or things that you can put in. It's a good idea if you're working with something that's very, very delicate, something that's breakable, something if you have cats, you have small children around, anything that can get to something, completely close up your project and put it away in a drawer or put it away either in a tin or put it in a bag, put it in something that it closes it off completely. Um, I put all my projects in bags as I'm working with them. Um, if they're done and they don't have a clasp on, they're all in bags and I showed you this kind of bag full of bags here. Um, all of my projects go in little bags. It's also going to keep your projects, if you're working on something that's tarnishing, it's going to keep it from tarnishing. So when you're working with sterling silver, even if you're working with copper and you don't want that to tarnish, if I wouldn't want my beads on my necklace to tarnish, anytime you have something that is um, silver, copper, even brass sometimes can get a little bit of a film on it. They can all be cleaned up, but who wants to take the time to clean things up? Stick it in a bag, that's gonna keep it from tarnishing. We also sell little anti-tarnish strips, so you can put that in them as well. The other thing with chains, if you're trying to store any sort of chain, is to actually wrap it around something. You can cut cardstock into little um, squares and cut little slits in the sides of them. So you have four pieces of cardstock and you can literally just cut slits in them. You can wrap your chain necklace right around and that's going to um, get them easily to transport. Um, the, again, the best way if you're working with a project is one, to try to work with it as fast as possible. Um, that way you get done, you get finished, and there's less room of you losing things or a delicate project being ruined. Um, the other thing is if you're bringing it into a store to match something, a great idea, I have a lot of people bring them in in tins or in little trays that their bead mat is on, and then they put another surface on top of it. One other little um, fun thing that somebody has said to me in the bead store before and an idea that they've had is that you can actually take um, tin foil. So who would have thought tin foil? But you can actually use tin foil and roll the tin foil, putting your chains or your necklaces in. You roll them as you travel because that's going to keep them from kinking and from mixing together. And then you shove them into one of those toilet paper rolls or a paper towel roll to keep them nice and tight in your luggage and also as you're traveling around with them. Um, again, keeping things separate. You're going to do bags, you're going to do um, bags, boxes, that sort of thing that's going to keep them all separate. Um, so in addition to tying off thread, another question that people have is adding thread. I'm going to hit that in a moment. Um, so if you have thread that you need to be adding to, now is a great time to get that. I'll give you a couple minutes to come back to that and I'm just going to talk to you about some of the new products that we have. Um, some of my People watching, you may even have bought a lot of these products recently. Um, 
we, like I said, we went to um, the Czech Republic um, in May, and if you haven't gotten a chance to view our channel and view the YouTube channel, you can check out the production of these beads. It's really awesome to watch the different videos that we have. It really gives you a deeper appreciation for the art and the craftsmanship that even go into, you know, this hank of Czech glass. It's amazing just still how much is manufactured by hand and how much is off machine and the very simplistic way that they still create Czech glass in the Czech Republic. So when we went in May, we got to see a lot of new products and we got to also bring home a lot of samples that I got to play with. And that's why some of our YouTube videos, you've gotten to see a lot of the new products that are being produced in the Czech Republic. A bunch of the new things that we got um, from the Czech Republic are some of these beads here. These are the magic beads. The magic beads are Czech fire polished beads um, that we carry and we carry them in a number of different sizes. And basically they have tons of different coatings on them that are gonna give them this magic coating. They really sparkle like crazy. They're a great substitute for Swarovski crystals and a lot of the bead weaving projects. They pick up tons of different colors. You can use, you know, this strand here. This is um, the blue magic. You can use this with blues. You can use it with purples. You can even use it with greens. So it has a lot of different colors. We have these in, I think, eight different styles of orchid and apple and copper and blue and purple. So there's a lot of different wine, all different colors that you can look at with the magic beads. In addition to the magic beads, we have um, some of the other beads that we've gotten to see while we were visiting the Czech Republic. And we had um, the Rizzo's here and the Rula's, Super Duo's, and oh, another Rizzo here. We're gonna take a little quick break and we're gonna walk over to our Czech glass wall so you can see all the different Czech glass that we are working with. So we're gonna walk over to our Czech glass wall here in our store. Tonight's cast is in our Chambersburg location. Um, our Chambersburg location, we have tons of gemstones. It's late here, so there's not a lot of people walking around uh, downtown Chambersburg at whatever time we are, 10 o'clock at night here. Uh, but we're walking around the store and we have tons and tons of different products. And we're gonna go over to our Czech glass wall. So I was talking about our trip to the Czech Republic, seeing everything being made and everything being manufactured. We carry tons and tons of Czech glass. When we first opened, we actually didn't carry that much Czech glass. We were mainly a gemstone store and we realized the value and really um, the uniqueness of a lot of the Czech glass. Check glass if you ever have shapes that you're looking for, or facets, or cuts, or colors, or um, any effects. We get a lot of check glass made for us in the Czech Republic, so we say to the factory, we have a great relationship with a lot of the different factories. We say to them, we want this bead in that shape, that color, and that's gonna get us to produce them. So those we usually have to get a lot in. So if you have a bead that you've really been looking for, that you've been dying to see, let us know and hopefully we can make it happen for you. We carry the Czech glass in tons and tons and tons of different colors. And um, like I said, we got to go through some of the factories, some homes where the production is still being done. And it's interesting how so much is still done by hand and so much is still manufactured um, just right on site in people's homes and outsourced by the companies in their homes to make the manufactured glass. So we're going back now, back to the table. So sorry if we're making you seasick a little bit as we're walking, but we're gonna go back to the table and I'm gonna talk to you about some of those other shapes that we're working, that we're working with and that some of the new shapes here that we have at the store. So we're gonna go back to the table here. And the table's a mess too, you can see. I've got everything kind of sitting right here in case I needed it. And the other thing that we did get um, when we were in the Czech Republic are we got to sample and I got to bring back a lot of these Rizzo beads. So Rizzo in Czech means rice. And that's pretty much the shape that they are. They look like little bug wings or little rice. And they're gonna have a hole right at the top of them. So when you're looking, they have a hole that's right at the top. It's hard to see here. I also have a little YouTube video on them. So after this, you can check that out. But I have, I'll kind of 
pull the camera down here for you. Um, the Rizzo bead has a little bit of a hole in the top here and then it's a little bit elongated. In addition to the Rizzo or the rice bead, we picked up a lot of Rula beads. So the Rula bead is a tubular shaped bead and it has the holes going through the side of it. So if my seed bead tube was a Rula, the holes would be here and here going through the Rula. After that, I have my Super Duo beads and my Super Duos. Super Duos are, I would say, one of our fastest selling shapes that we have in seed beads. Um, the Super Duo is very, very popular. There's tons and tons of patterns out there. We do tons of YouTube videos on it. Uh, if you have patterns, you can also share them with our, us on Facebook. We'd love to see what you guys have made out of them. We have these in a ton of different colors and available in our stores and online. And these seed beads, um, we used to just carry seed beads that were manufactured or made in Japan. We carry the Mayuki brand seed bead. I like the Mayuki brand. They have a really nice consistency. They have great color um, and they have great sizes that kind of in between sizes that you don't really need to worry about. They cover pretty much the majority of them. And we started adding a lot of the check seed beads to our wall. In addition to this, we did have um, spikes and gumdrops that we got to play with. I know our Fort Myers location really kind of went off with the gumdrops and with the spikes making rings and bracelets and all of that. Um, so next time maybe we'll show you one of these projects. Um, and when we're working too with a lot of these different beads, um, I like to use um, you know, check glass with check glass, but it's fun to mix the shapes and to mix what we're making. When you're making and manufacturing, um, you can use some of the different check glass together with gemstones. You can use the Rizzo's with the Mayuki's. It doesn't really matter. You can use all of those things together. So as promised, I'm going to show you guys the number two question that's asked in bead weaving. And number one, again, was basically, how do I put on a clasp? simple loop that you can peyote up and then tying off your knots on the ends are what we went over. The other thing is, how do I add new thread? So if you get to the end of your project, I'm gonna pretend that this is not the end of my project and that this is somewhere in the middle of the project and I need to add new thread. The easiest way to do so, and if you have beads that have large holes, it's kind of nice because you don't have to worry too much about um, seeing that knot the easiest way to do it that I have found is to take my new thread, and I'll show that with this black thread here. Cut off my stop bead that I had on here for another project. And I'm gonna take my new thread, so this is my black thread here. I'm gonna tie it onto my white thread end. So the black thread gets tied around the white thread. I'm not using the white thread in whatsoever right now. I'm just using the black thread. I tie this right around my white thread. The nice thing then is that loop and that knot can slide up and down along that thread. I can get it then nice and tight next to my project and put it exactly where I need it to be. I give a nice little yank on that knot and then I'm going to get my two ends, my original end that was here that my thread was getting short and my new end of my longer piece of thread that my needle is on and I'm going to tie those two ends together. This will save you time when you thread back through. It takes a little bit longer to do. And that'll get it nice and tight that you have on there. Again, another question in addition to this thread. Oh, the last thing is that I would cut this down a little bit short, keep it there so that way I know when I get done with the project to add glue. Again, don't add your glue till you're completely done with your project. Another thing people ask is how to thread the needle. So I already threaded this, but I'm gonna take it off for you so you can show you how to do it. So if I burn it or if I cut my thread, I'm gonna have a little bit of a blunt end to some degree as far as where it got cut. This is where I said you definitely want to have your needle nose pliers or your flat nose pliers. They're kind of a bead weaver's best friend at the start. I completely flatten out my thread. 
It's hard to see with this camera resolution, but I completely flatten it out. What that's gonna do is kind of fan the thread at the end so it's almost triangular. That's gonna make it really easy to pick up into the eye of your needle. And you can usually drop it right on then onto your thread. It goes right in and then you can still pull through. So my needle is now threaded, easy, easy can do. And that's how you thread your needle. So it's kind of putting on the end, adding new thread, as well as threading the needle. So the other thing that I wanted to show you guys, and um, depending on how long you wanna hang out, we'll be here, uh, but we don't wanna keep you too long. I know we got started pretty late are some of the new things that we've put on YouTube. So if you haven't gotten a chance to watch all of our videos yet, these are some of the great new projects that we have. This has been really popular. This is um, basically a version of our MAGA scale bracelet. The base is going to be a peyote base and the top is embellished with drops. You can embellish with drops, you can embellish with rizzos, you can embellish with rulas, um, you can embellish with a bunch of different things, but it makes a really nice kind of wide, stiff, bracelet that looks like it has a little bit more oomph to it and it's a really great way the seed beads you actually um, the seed beads you actually get a lot that you have kind of random tubes and you have half of this or half of that um, this is a great way to use up a bunch of those different tubes you can kind of mix the different colors together so you can check out this video online that's done by Heather um, another one that um, we have is the imperial bracelet the imperial bracelet is a great bracelet to teach you multiple things it's going to teach you brick stitch um, here at the ends and it's also going to teach you how to do square stitch here in the middle when you're adding your different rows that's going to be the imperial using cubes 11 o's and some check glass um, Pam, also one of our regulars here at the Chambersburg store, said that she uses um, a lot of tackle boxes. So when she's traveling or when she's using, transporting her beads or storing, she uses tackle boxes. So thanks for the, thanks for the suggestion for that back to storage. Um, in addition to that, we have our um, bracelet here that this is a double flat spiral. So we have both a single flat spiral and a double flat spiral video. And the double flat spiral is much wider, obviously, than the single flat spiral. There's a bunch of variations on this. You can use different shapes in the middle. You don't have to use round. And you can use all different seed beads on the sides. So this is a flat spiral bracelet. One of the new ones that we have, and we posted, and then it was actually featured um, on the front. We picked this up and wanted to make it, and then it got featured on one of the beading magazines. Um, this is our Tila Tread Bracelet, and it's working with Super Duos and Tilas. And then we added the Rizzos on the ends to show the new shape of our seed bead. So if you also are checking out our class listings for our different locations, check these out because they might be near you. Some people can learn great from YouTube, some people can't, so we still have a lot of the different classes. Back to the, um, back to the double flat spiral. Just to show you a variation, this is a single flat spiral. And this is a great bracelet to show you kind of the end clasp on that it's decorated basically. So the bead's still going in, but it has a little decoration on it, has that peyote look to it to make the end a little bit more substantial. When I was talking about the rulers earlier, we've done this class a lot in our locations. Um, this is the ruler herringbone. So it's based on the herringbone stitch, but the nice thing about this bracelet, I designed it that you would only have to use your rulers. You don't actually need a clasp because the rulers create your clasp. So they're gonna create your toggle bar and then you're creating your toggle loop. Again, here's a nice example of that peyote. You're creating your toggle loop out of some of your 11O or your 15O seed beads, depending on what you do because um, you can choose to do either side. And that has that rule is you can do it in different color patterns and different connections and different kind of uses as well. In addition to the mega scale with drops, we also have the mega scale with the Magatamas. So this was the original kind of version and that's why we called it a mega scale for the Magatamas. The Magatamas are a great bead, you can kind of see on the side a little bit here. They have a shape to them 
that they go and the holes on one side and they have a little bit of a cut to them. So again, you can mix and match them, matching the different colors and that's gonna get you a completely different look to just take the colors and mix them together. All of these do have a 6-0 peyote base and we do those as well. Um, we also offer these as a lot of private classes in the store. So if you have something that you want to learn, you can go to your local Potomac Bean Company, check them out. You can even take pictures for us of things that you've seen. We tell people, bring in pictures all the time. We'll help you. We'll figure it out. It also is a little challenge for us because we get to sit there with our needles and play and try to figure things out. That's a great thing about um, working in the store is you get to see the repairs that people bring in, all the different jewelry and the projects. And I love when people come in and kind of show off what they've done because it really does get your mind flowing and get you all these different things. So in the future, basically, um, we have a number of us that do the YouTube videos, and I'm the only one that you get to see tonight. Um, it's a late night, and we weren't sure exactly how this was going to work with a bunch of the different kinks and kind of figuring it all out and having to use the computer camera rather than our two cameras that were supposed to be set up on the side. But in the future, um, both Holly and Heather will join us um, since they've done some of the other videos. We'll be focusing some on using some polymer clay with Holly and with Heather, some of the more intricate seed bead um, detailed things. And then any questions that you have for me, any project examples that you want to make, any um, little helpful hints that we should let the rest of our um, beading subscribers know, we'd be happy to hear them. Thanks for checking in for those of you that did check in tonight and that asked questions or that had comments. Um, we love to see those. That's kind of what keeps us going. So again, in the future, we will definitely try to make this more streamlined and not start so late for you guys. Um, I was, I've been talking now for an hour and a half because um, we thought that it was working and it was not. So it was just working on our computer and not everybody else's. So I apologize for the late start, um, but thanks everybody for sticking it out and sticking with us. And we will definitely see you the next one. We're gonna try to do this at least twice a month to get you guys kind of interactive and to show us exactly what you wanna do. And we'll also be posting on our Facebook page for some of these interactive webcasts, we're actually gonna be doing classes. So we'll post for you guys the material list that you'll need and you'll have plenty of time. We'll do it about two weeks ahead of time. We'll pick up some new projects, some new classes. We'll post ahead of time and say, here's what we're making. These videos that will then be available on YouTube. So if I go too quickly, I know I speak very quickly and I apologize for that. I try to slow down my speech, but I just talk quickly. Um, when you are looking then, you can pause it on YouTube and you can go back and view it. So you'll get the full view here and then we'll post it right away to our YouTube channel. So when we do do the online classes, you'll be able to watch, you'll be able to see on the bead mount exactly what I do. My hands are moving and better camera angle than this one. And then you'll be able to go back and to view it on YouTube. So if I move too quickly for you or Heather or Holly moves too quickly for you, um, we'll be able to kind of pause that later on and you'll be able to catch up with us. So thanks a lot for watching. In the future when we do these online classes, the more YouTube videos that you guys watch, the better you'll have an understanding of the different projects that we do. Also, the comments that you make on the YouTube videos are really helpful. Even if they're critical, they help us to make the videos better for you guys. We like to hear your feedback and we like to hear what you guys have to say. And in addition to that, um, again, keep us keep posting on our Facebook pages, all your different projects. We love to see them. And hopefully we see you in one of our locations. And thanks a lot for joining us tonight.